Hi everyone, um, just a, a bit of an odd video putting a few ideas together. Um, you know, this head, heart, faith, head, heart, belief um, debate has been going on and I've, I've made a video, video about that yesterday and I was thinking about it again this morning and um, this funny scene, well, they're all funny because it's a comedy, but this one scene in um, the English comedy series, The Mighty Boosh, um, came to mind where um, Howard and Vince are discussing some some guy and um, this guy that they're talking about um, always questioned reality. And so you'd make a statement of fact and then, then you'd question it. So they have this back and forth conversation um, questioning everything. So it's like um, I had toast for breakfast, but did I really have toast for breakfast? Um, I went to the shop, but did I really go to the shop? Um, anyway, it just made me think of, you know, I, I believe Jesus died for my sins, but did he really die for my sins? I believe on Jesus Christ um, that he saved me, but did I really believe on Jesus Christ and that he saved me? That's what people are doing, except they're not asking about it themselves. They're asking it about other believers. It's never themselves. They know that they are saved but they want to be able to question the reality of whether or not someone else is saved and that's how they do it. Um, and, you know, there, there is... Reality is reality. God, God doesn't... Um, God states facts and they are true. God is not a liar. He, he speaks truth. So when he says... Um, you know, John 3.16, for whosoever shall believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved, or whatever it is. It, it's, it's, it is what it is. You believe and you're saved. You believe he died for your sins, was buried and rose again on the third day. You're saved. It's, it's reality. There's no, but did he really die for my, did he really die for your sins? Um, did you really believe that he really died for your sins? Uh did you really believe in your heart? Um, yeah, it's just, it's just silly. Anyway, it, it just made me laugh thinking about this, this series and how absurd it is that we do the same thing. We're doing what they are doing as, as a joke. We're doing it seriously. Well, not me, other people. Um, and it's, it's ridiculous. So anyway, I'm going to um, put the link to this in the this little short 30 second scene for you if you want to see it and have a laugh. Um, I'll put it in the description box. And the other thing I want to talk about is um, I, you know, I was spiritually depressed for years and my dad gave, gave me a uh, spiritual depression and its causes and cure by Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones to read um, and it was kind of what started me on the path back to uh, spiritual health, if you like. Um, and I believe that this book, I mean, it's been a few years since I read it now, but I just, I remember it had a focus on the gospel and in particular how many Christians just don't understand, you know, they kind of, they got saved by the gospel and then and then they think that, well, that's done with. Um, put that aside and uh, try to move on with the Christian life. But they leave, leave the gospel behind and um, forget what God did for them. And um, they just get way off track and confused and depressed and... You know, the institutional churches are full of those type of people. And those are the people that I think people are trying to discount to say that they're not saved because they're turning up to church, sitting in the pew, not on fire for God, 
just going through the motions um, because they're, they're malnourished. They have forgotten what Jesus did for them on the cross. The, whatever's being preached in the pulpit is not nourishing them. It's not reminding them of what Jesus did. So they are depressed. And that's why you can't discount people and say, but did you really believe? Because I don't see the evidence um, that I, I believe I should see and I want to count you out because if you can do that, if you can do nothing and sit there on the pew and just turn up every Sunday and do nothing and, and get into heaven, well, that doesn't suit me. I, you you got to earn it somehow. you got to prove that you're saved and, in order to get in. Um, and that's, you know, that's not biblical. And it's... Getting into heaven is not fair. <laughs> it's, it, it's not fair at all. Jesus didn't make it fair. Um, you know, if Mother Teresa didn't actually believe the gospel, yet some murderer did, well, guess what? Mother Teresa goes to hell and the murderer goes to heaven. Does that sound fair? No, but God paid the, for their sin with his blood. And if they believe on that, that he died for them and that there is nothing they can do to earn that salvation except just believe, then they are saved and it's not fair. But it, you think you're good enough because you didn't murder someone and uh, or some abuser of yours. Maybe you've got someone who abused you and yet they believe the gospel. You don't want them in heaven. It's not fair, but um, salvation is not fair. We, we all deserve to go to hell. We all have done terrible things because all sin is terrible. And what you've done in your heart is, is as bad as what someone physically did. Um, it's just nobody knows that you did it in your heart. Um, just read the Sermon on the Mountain, you'll see. Um, anyway, back to this book. Christian people, writes Lloyd-Jones. Oh, I want that to stay open, thank you very much. Christian people, writes Lloyd-Jones, too often seem to be perpetually in the doldrums and too often... Um, give this appearance of unhappiness and lack of freedom and absence of joy. There is no question at all but that this is the main reason why large numbers of Christian, no, large numbers of people have ceased to be interested in Christianity. Um, and it's not because they're not saved, it's because they have forgotten why or what Jesus did for them. Now, there's a, a, these are some reviews on Goodreads, by the way, which I'm sure you can see. Um, and I wanted to talk about one of them. Um, yeah, this one, I think. Yes. This book was written in 1965 and has had a lasting impact on me. The author says that the solution to overcoming depression is to talk to yourself rather than listen to yourself. He mentions several times that you need to take your, yourself in hand and have a talk with yourself and remind yourself of God. So this, this is exactly what David Benjamin promotes when he says, preach the gospel to yourself. Instead of listening to your evil conscience, talking about you haven't done enough um, for God today, you've got to better read your Bible more, better um, spend some more hours praying on your knees or something, um, or you've, you've done too much sin lately. Um, instead of listening to that evil conscience, um, 
you need to talk to yourself. You pull yourself aside and say, hey, hey, listen to me. You know what God did for you? He died on the cross for you. He wiped away all your sins. You are cleansed. You are righteous. You are holy. You are sanctified. He lives inside of you. You have been regenerated, born of God. Um, the spirit of the life-giving Spirit resides in you, and He is producing life in you. And your flesh is dead. It was buried. It was crucified and buried with Jesus on the cross. And all you need to do is believe it and reckon it to be true. And it will be held in the place of death. And your Jesus is your life now. And he, he will live through you and produce fruit. You don't need to produce anything. Your flesh is dead. It cannot produce anything good. So stop trying to resurrect your flesh and do something so rest in Jesus and, and your life is hid in Christ and you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and he has done that all for you for nothing. He loves you. Um, I mean, you know, talk to yourself, tell yourself this stuff. I mean, the way David does it is by, you know, thanking God, talking to God rather than his, his himself. Um, Thank you that I am, you know, I was crucified and buried with Jesus and I've been raised a new life. But it's the same thing of speaking the truth, knowing the truth, believing the truth, telling yourself, reminding yourself, thanking God for it. And that is what lifts you up and gets you out of the doldrums, gets you walking in the spirit because you're keeping your mind set on the things of the spirit and you're not listening to your evil conscience. So it's not, it's not a stupid idea that some that David came up with and why would you, you know, I've seen comments, why would you preach the, the gospel to yourself every day? That's so dumb. Like, come on. It's the good news and it's the foundation of everything we have in Christ. The whole of Christianity is built on the foundation of the gospel, Jesus Christ, and what he accomplished on the cross. And if you're not reminding yourself of what he's done because you think it's stupid and it's something you just needed to believe way back when, and now you can move on to the supposed meat of the word, which is, you know, a life as a um, law as a rule of life, where you just move on to do's and don'ts and trying to perfect your flesh, well... You're going to fail. You've got to walk in the Spirit, and that's only done by keeping your mind set on the things of the Spirit, the truth, what Jesus did. That's how we get out of spiritual depression and into the mind of Christ, because the mind of Christ is what Christ has done. It's, it's Him, it's everything He is and, and accomplished and what he is to us and it's he's he's in us and and when we're reminding ourselves of the the truth our spirit is our soul is connected to our spirit and it brings about life and peace in in our minds in our conscience our conscience is is settled down Anyway, I just wanted to point out that this is something that, you know, is recommended by others, such as Martin Lloyd-Jones. So do it. It's a, it's a great thing to do every day. And when I'm feeling condemned or in the doldrums, um, under attack, or just feeling flat, I just... Thank Jesus for what he did and, and speak some of these truths. And instantly I'm, I'm lifted up to a higher um, level of, uh, you know, just a lightness, a peace. Um, not, you know, not jumping for joy, but just, you know, relief. Like, ah, there we go. Now I'm, I just feel good, normal. I don't feel down and... Um, 
It's very refreshing. So I highly recommend it. And so does Martin Lloyd-Jones. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. See you later.